fellow travelers to our little part two of never ending adventures breakdown of the new Fiona and cake series. I am your host diggity DJ Nettie P. Yeah. And I'm, I'm your co-host Russell Tindall, uh, Russ DJ Russ T as they know me, you know, in the, in certain circles, that's what they know me as. And in all my cool circles and all the cool circles. When I go down to, uh, Ned, did we visit the, uh, ne'er do wells bar today? Is that what that was? That is the ne'er do wells bar. Yeah. That whenever is... I visit the ne'er do wells bar, they know me as DJ Russ T and I just I like can't it. stand it. Can't stand <laughs> it. That's my past. Leave, leave my past alone. And if you're new to this podcast for some reason, uh, we're not really DJs. We just kind of have fake DJ names for some reason. And that's just how this podcast rolls. Cause that's just, yeah. that's the way we roll, you know? And I roll. think it's all about having, having parties and, and party time forever and all that stuff. So anyways, uh, I'm new to Adventure Time. Ned is a longtime fan and we are super pumped to be talking about the second episode of the Fiona and Cake series, Simon Petrikov. Simon yeah. Petrikov, dude, I cannot stop singing for the life of me. Then now that I'm not part of the madness, like it is yeah. so so good, it, dude. It has I love almost. It. I don't know if you know the song uh, "Bell" by Jack Johnson, but it has this, the little. It almost sounds like the exact same guitar riff as that song. Mm, so, man, and go, that's guys, cool. go listen to "Bell" by Jack Johnson. It's like a minute and a half long song. But it's almost the exact same guitar riff as this. This wow. not in the okay. of this song. I didn't even pick up on that, man. I do like some Jack Johnson. It's, oh it's yeah, a everybody loves a little bit of Jack Johnson, yeah. man. But dude, I'm in my feels a little bit with. Uh, I don't know. This is so like of the time right now happening, but uh, the passing of um, Jimmy Buffett. Yeah. That you know maybe Jack Johnson. He's we got to hold on to him. And then was, <laughs> I saw somewhere someone said, man. All right, we got it. Someone reach out to John Mayer. He's done enough for the Deadheads. It was so great that he went on tour. Come with back and Your do Grateful Jimmy Dead. Buffett stuff. It's time for him to go on tour as Jimmy Buffett and oh do Jimmy gosh. Buffett songs. And I'm like, I'm into it. I'm into that. I don't that. think J- Jimmy Buffett songs are complex enough for John Mayer to be guitar. Oh, no, dude. He would crush it. It would be so good. I would, I'm down for that. Look, some James Buffet. Come on. Um, but anyways, man, let, let's let's get into this a little bit. I did want to start this off. We had a couple of people talking about, you know, a little bit of worries about things being spoiled for me. And I just wanted to give a very slight, mm-hmm. uh, you know, our thoughts on why we chose to do this. And, and really, uh, you know, after a good amount of thinking on my end, at least, I just kind of felt like it's not going to change my viewing experience or hinder it my really enjoyment isn't. of the show long term. I'm I've noticed in this episode, because this is certainly one where it was like, okay, here's a lot of things that you could infer and through context clues uh, be spoiled for you. And I, for the most part, just trying to think past it. And honestly, we've been in the like Adventure Time community for two years now. And it's really hard to avoid most spoilers anyway. So I'm just really excited to find out how things happen and find yeah. out like what occurs on the experience that leads to these things and why, who's this TV guy? We know Jake's puppies right now, but, but who's this TV guy? Uh, you know, we're in season five and we'll get there eventually and it's going to be okay. We'll be good. It's going to be a great podcast regardless. Yeah, you'll, you'll be fine. I mean, I'm thinking about it from my perspective and it'd be similar to if I was watching Avatar The Last Airbender for the first time. And I was like, oh, no, spoiler. He he goes to the Earth Kingdom and learns how to earthbend. I'd be like, yeah, that's kind of, I mean, yeah. that's yeah. not really you the get point it. of me getting spoiled. <laughs> like, it's just like, how is that going to happen? So yeah, that's why I, I, don't, mean, I don't think, so that, I, that's why I had my little segment just to kick us cool. off today before getting into the story too much of like spoilers that are, we're going to, you're going to face, and this is exactly how I want to spoil them for you without you asking too many questions about them. Mm. Uh, obviously, you now see the zombies that are in kind of this post-apocalyptic world. They yeah, will be in the Simon and Marcy episode. We're like 10 episodes away from that. So no need to worry too much about that. Yeah, I didn't even um, think of that as a spoiler. I just kind of, 
I, yeah, I just felt like, I was like, oh, the zombies. Yeah, it makes sense, I, whatever. I just wanted to make sure you knew that that was like not something you missed or that it was that much of a big deal mm-hmm. either which way. Where the mutant um, uh, Ninja Turtles? Are they... <laughs> is that a different universe? Okay, that's a different could universe. Be, could be somebody else's dreams. Yeah, yeah. Um, the biggest <laughs> one in this episode that's probably harder to get around, there's, there's two main ones. So that's why I kind of wanted to bring them out. Like, humans exist, and they obviously have like this big, you know, advanced society. Um, it's been a thousand years. Yeah. In, in the Islands miniseries, that's where kind of humanity comes back into play. Um, but really, for the rest of Adventure Time, it, they re- they really are just in the Islands miniseries, and they don't you don't really see them again ever. So okay, yes, they're humans. No, it's not really a big deal that you know they exist, except for it may spoil the Islands like two episodes of the Islands miniseries for you. Maybe yeah, that's I I mean uh, to be honest, I kind of felt like it was just going to happen. Like it had to happen eventually. We're going to find humans to some degree. Yeah. There's Finn just can't later... be the only one. Finn has parents. There has to yeah. be a line before that and a line before that, you know, so. There's, I, um, I'm not surprised. There's just some episodes where Finn gets very like existential dread about being the only human. And so it may like spoil a little bit of those episodes for the first time, but not too bad. And then the second big spoiler is kind of like, obviously the stuff around Simon and Betty. Um, mm-hmm, so the best way that I can, cause the, the rest of the show, it looks like it's going to be about Simon and Betty pretty much is yeah. that kind of, you would assume that the adventure time ended with there being some sort of story arc for the ice King. And it is a redeeming one. Uh, obviously he's back to being human. It was at the cost. He does get Betty back essentially. Um, Betty's kind of around and she's not around at the same time for pretty much like season six through 10. Um, she's kind of around, but not around. Um, and in the really almost the pretty much the last episode, like she kind of does this ultimate sacrifice to save Simon. Um, hmm. And all okay. of that in turn makes Simon normal. I, the, the crown has its own thing mm-hmm. that it does. So that's where we end Adventure Time, the TV show. It's not like the only thing that happens at the end, but yeah, the Ice King's arc is that he's saved. Um, and so this is where this is picking up 12 years later, Tim essentially. Being um, saved, being in an exhibit. <laughs> yeah, being, well, <laughs> we'll get self-imposed. Into. So like, that's what I want to kind of get into a little bit yeah, yeah, as yeah. well. Is that okay. he, he's having the dream. He's still dreaming about things being chaotic, but he, I mean, I think the whole dream sequence is very cool to start with because he's, you know, in this world now and in his dream, he's dreaming about getting chased by zombies and post-apocalyptic, but he looks happy and he sounds happy and he's smiling. He does. Yeah. And all this so stuff. Pleasant. So. I mean, that was like a note that I had immediately was like, man, and I even said Mr. Petrikov because that was the vibe he gave me. <laughs> I was like, Mr. Petrikov, he seems like such a, like such a pleasant person. He's got a sewing kit. Like, He's this wonderful father figure for Marceline. Mm-hmm. And, and they're just like hiding in sewers from these mutant zombies. And they're just so okay with that. It's not the best situation. Clearly, like, they're mutually benefiting each other by living together where she gets this father figure. She gets someone to kind of take care of her in ways that she just could not possibly do as a child. And then on the other hand, like, he gets this thing that's keeping her, like, connected. Or Sorry. He gets something that's keeping him too connected to reality, which is yeah, she's well, stopping him uh, from putting the crown on and stuff like that. It's exactly, and it's, it's wonderful. And it's that, and it's going to go into my deeper topic that I want to like hold, not get too much into to start, but like having a sense of purpose. And his purpose at that point in time was to keep Marcy safe and to keep her happy and to to just like just keep going. And I think that's what he's lacking now. Um, yeah, but it was so great then. He felt, or she felt so comfortable with him that she fell asleep in a sewer. Mm-hmm. You know, like that that says something to me that she really can trust him and, and tr- truly fully yeah. feels like he is out there to protect her despite yeah, and, knowing how crazy he can get with the crown on and stuff. Exactly. And guys, we haven't gotten to in season five and the normal level of the podcast where about 10 or 15 episodes away from Simon and Marcy, which is kind of just like an a episode of that setting, of them kind of running around surviving the wasteland. Era. Yeah, so, right on. That's exciting. 
Yeah, that's very exciting. But I want to get so we he wakes up. We're back in the apartment too, and he's got this exhibit. And it's funny to me because I feel like it's in self imposed. Like I feel like he is trying to share himself with humanity, as as what he calls it. Um, what is an antiqu? Uh, what does he call antiquarian. himself? Antiquarian. An antiquarian. Yeah. yeah, basically being a living, breathing antique. Um, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. he's obviously proud of it, but it seems like it's kind of met with the moot point, I guess. Like people don't really care. People don't really. They're like, that's a phone. Yeah, and that's also yeah. A he's phone, a, and a demonstration of pants. the 20th century living. Like how? I mean, I don't know how interesting is that. Unless you're someone who has a deep fascination with it. Most people. I mean, it, it reminds me of my a conversation with my uncle where his focus is so. And we've talked about this on the podcast. That's why I'm kind of blown by it. Where his focus is on the now and the future and all that stuff. Whereas me, I'm so interested in family line, family history. Where did we come from? When did we come from Ireland? That sort of a thing. And just no interest in it. So of course, all these people are just, I mean, it's an exhibit and like, kind of feels like a zoo in a way. Like yeah, he's, it feels like a he's zoo. trapped himself in this demonstration of 20th century living. What is, what does the sign say? The sign says 20th century man and his natural habitat so much dust. So much just, dust. And that's that's just today. That's the 21st century, man. Dust so everywhere. Dust. <laughs> <laughs> hey, in my house it is. I know that for sure, dude. Uh, oh, yeah. House Everyone's so house. Um, and then I <laughs> love the other things in there, too. Like, the, he had, like, a thing that said gratitude on the wall and yeah. a little pillow that said, be yourself. And I was like, be oh, they kind of poking fun at, like, the home goods. TJ Maxx mm -hmm. style of everything. I'm like, that's kind of <laughs> like funny too. Every Airbnb ever now is exactly. like beach. <laughs> and very live, this laugh, is, love style. Yeah, this is the um, kitchen, just so you know. <laughs> but you do see, the funny thing to me about him in this setting specifically is when you kind of see a little bit more of Simon's past and a little bit more of like how the Ice King has things set up too, it's very surprising to me that he's not continuing any sort of research or scientific studies or studies of magic that he's almost not like partnered up with with Princess Bubblegum kind of being like mis like I, I would be surprised he's not living in the, the Candy Kingdom, helping PB with experiments like he's a scientist and, and maybe some of that has to do with his obsession with Betty. And his obsession yeah, with maybe getting so. Betty back has put him in a state of total arrested development. I think I think he is, and I think Finn, I mean, and I don't know the development of Finn throughout the rest of the series, but I do feel like Finn seems to be stuck mentally as well in some sort of a state of a needing to adventure or like, it's almost like a yeah. regression or a, I'm, I'm, we can get I'm, into it later. But yeah, it's, like, I kind of agree and disagree. Um, yeah, it feels like a forced regression, though. Like, he's just not reading rooms correctly, or is it his uh, band-aids that he's putting on situations are just totally out in left field. Like, mm -hmm. oh, let's go adventure. Oh, you need to be, like, close to death. Oh, like, I don't know, man. Well, it's, like, it's take really that, fascinating. man. We, we, I feel like we've done a few, at least a few episodes, like the dungeon episode, kind of. Like, the way that Finn goes about the dungeon He's like, oh man, Jake would have mastered every one of these challenges. And the way that, that Jake goes about the dungeon, he's like, oh man, Finn would have mastered all these challenges, you know? Um, yeah. And I think it's it's possibly one of those things. You see that th this is old enough to where Jake's passed away. Uh, he's mm -hmm. got a big Jake tattoo on his chest, which I yeah. freaking love when they did that. Like, like I think they, they, again, they dropped that as a quick hint um, in the last episode of Adventure Time and in Distant Lands that he's got this big old chest Aww. piece tattoo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you're right, though. Like, he had Jake in his life always to kind of be like, if he does go on, like, oh, yeah, this is totally going to be a good idea to Jake be like, be like, I don't know if it necessarily will, man, but I'm here to, like, support you in it and, and let you play out, you know, what you think is good. Yeah. So maybe you see the regression is a little bit of a lack of uh, guidance from a Jake, a Jake balancing out of him. him yeah. You know? Well, he has a moment, right. Where he says, have you talked to Marcelin to Simon when they're in the mm -hmm. bar? And that feels a bit like, Oh, that's great advice. Like, yeah, maybe you should talk to Marcelin and, and she'll understand and be able to connect with you. Cause she went through this shared experience with you and knows more of where you're coming from and all this. But there are other moments where he's like, Oh, go get firewood, you know, like let's distract him. And he says, to yeah, himself, he's like, yeah, you're doing such a good job of keeping fine. him busy. 
yeah, everything will be fine. And then another point where he's fighting this bear and he lets Simon, oh, uh, take the killing move. You know, all these moments where it's like, the kill no, shot, dude, yeah. like, he's not, he's not a hero like you are or, or whatever, right? He needs help. He needs you to save him because he's in actual danger. And we see Simon get freaking clawed. And it's Finn's fault that that happens. And mm-hmm. I, I, it bothered me. It, it was just like, man, Finn, no, it's what happened to. to you, bud? Yeah, you know, well, what, what happened? It's, I think it's the the crazy thing is it's like Finn is like ultimately good, but he's not like a perfect hero. He's not going to be perfectly right in every situation. He's still that, that like flawed hero that you get a lot of humanity out of. Um, and he's overconfident, and again, or overconfident, man. I don't know. Well, with what he's doing now, you can also see that his adventuring has gone up to the nth degree. Like, he's just, like, he is a hardcore badass. And I love the fact that they, if we're going to get more, if we're going to get more, he fought a bear. He fought Um, a bear! (laughs) But we, I mean, dude, think about it. We do actually get blood in this episode. Like, the blood gushes out of the, like, Mudskipper's face. Like, Finn's back's all janked up. Simon's arms are dripping with blood. And I'm like, they wouldn't have done that on old TV. That was a huge thing with kids' cartoons was to, like, not show blood. And so them just being like, yeah, like, Finn's a violent motherfucker. Like, that's awesome. Yeah, it, it really takes it to a new level. And it's it's subtle, but a giant hole... In the head of the bear, or not the bear, that was the fish. <laughs> that mud skipper. Yeah, the, the mud giant skipper. log hole. Um, <laughs> that was, that's another level of, of violence and in a very simple way. Like they're not overdoing it with gore or whatever, but yeah. I felt that. I definitely felt that attack. And I felt when Finn goes and wrestles the bear and freaking almost breaks his neck and then yeah. later chokes him out. Like I, each one of those cracks, uh, I felt. Also, okay. I have a theoretically speaking for this episode. I have no idea if it actually will come up again or mean something. Obviously, Finn's hanging out with Huntress Wizard a lot. Uh, odds are it's a semi-dating wink. kind of thing. Wink, wink. Yeah. I, w- I would assume we're going to see some of her later this season. But also cool. the way the bear shows up. The bear was behind Finn at by the fireplace, right? You see the eyes open in the woods and the bear disappears. The bear's got some sort of weird mask stuff around its eyes. The eyes look incredibly human, and the whole entire bear is green, and then it grows extra large, and then it grows a third arm. Finn's just swinging around, b- breaks its neck with his hands, and but he's holding the bear, and he's just like, Simon, you take the kill shot. Simon, you do. I think that that, that bear is Huntress Wizard, and... You think the Finn bear, got you with, think he just killed Huntress Wizard? No, no, that him and Huntress Wizard are working together and he's like, hey, I'm going to try to make Simon feel better. Will you help me make him feel like he defeated a bear? Um, okay, I don't... And so I'm they, not, they were going to play it one. all like fake and he accidentally gets scratched. Okay. Um, that's my Interesting, opinion. theoretically speaking. Is it I, interesting? I think it's... It, the bears looked too weird not to be... Like the eyes of the bear were too weird, and the eyes. I just like think Huntress it has something eyes. to do with the fact that they're in the heart of the forest. I think this is. I took it a totally different way. I was really well, like, okay, they're in the heart Finn of the forest. Scratches this is, his back on the magic bush, and it looks like there's like green shit around it too. I think yeah. that, that might pl- come into play later as that, well. Well, that's that, definitely coming into play later, and again, that's another reason why I, I, your theoretically speaking is not di- like it, I'm. But not it was the bush that it. scratched him, not the bear. That's yeah, what I'm but I think all of this is it's the most ancient part of Ooh, right? This is the heart of the forest. I think Huntress Wizard really did say, Finn, don't ever go there. Like, no one's mm. ever supposed to be there other than, like, people that are, like, connected with the forest, like maybe she is. And this is just a, a really unfortunate situation, but it is a situation that fate brought them to, as we know, because <laughs> Finn freaking blindfolded both of them, which was one of the funniest reveals of this episode easily, yeah. is he's like, what tree? <laughs> gosh what is that what is that i can't remember i can't remember if it's a movie or a tv show where it was like oh we're looking for like the the treasure but the only way to find the treasure is to become completely lost and then it reveals itself that there's something like that some other show or movie that i grew up with but i'm i'm not sure but i i do think there's 100 percent going to be real consequences from Finn getting his back cut. I think there's probably going to be a situation where he needs to be saved or something. Exactly. If I was going to have a theoretically speaking 
but I definitely don't think the bear is the Huntress Wizard. Okay. Uh, but it's an interesting idea. I mean, I don't know. It's not the know, furthest her powers thing. Necessarily. Go, go back and like, or the next time when you watch this again, kind of like watch the bear's movement. The bear could have slashed Finn from the bushes. The bear could have probably overpowered Finn. Finn, but maybe the bear was the able to neck. know that Simon was the weaker of the two, and that's you know. Bears yeah. are smart, man. Especially think mutant bears. It's not the it wouldn't change too much if it was or wasn't. But I I liked okay. looking at it from that perspective as that Huntress Wizard was helping Finn like with this adventure. Interesting. You know? Well, we'll see. I think we'll definitely find out to some degree. I mean, if that was the case, they'll reveal it in future episodes. Yeah. So it'll be for interesting sure. to see that. But, but no, I, I definitely I took this for sure as uh like this is bad. They shouldn't be there. They're messing with something they shouldn't be messing with and i'm i'm really curious to find out what happens with the bush that was glowing and with finn's yeah. back yeah that, uh, that was like I, too too obvious of like a this is an important thing and being in the heart of ooh and then we brush it off at the episode like yeah so who knows but they get out of the i'm trying to think of anything else like significant happens in the forest we just see Simon, I do like I do like them sitting by the fire and he cracks the egg and he's like, I'm good at making cowboy coffee. And so there's a little bit of you see that little bit of his humanity. Like he, he kind of smiles a little bit while he's talking about it. And well, I mean, there's a reason why I made him my lovely. And I think this is kind of playing into it. Like Simon Petrikov is for sure my lovely of this episode. He's just going through it. And I, I felt like he really needed some love. Not that he knows I made him my lovely, but I really enjoyed his resourcefulness and his willingness to say yes to Finn despite his current state of being. Mm -hmm. Like, he's not in a good spot. And probably the last thing he wanted to do was go adventure with Finn. But he's like, all right, like, you know, I'm kind of giving up, but I'll say yes and we'll just go do yeah. this thing. And then he does the cowboy coffee thing with the eggshells. And I, I, it was really nice. It was really pleasant. Mm -hmm. He seems like someone I would love to to know <laughs> so yeah. it's well, cool it shows that we're, you, we're doing again, this he's, he's competent like he he'd be able to go do some adventuring by himself he did do that he has all you know he was an artifact scientist back in the day that he was going on adventures with betty um yeah that and the that, excursion that he recalls is so sweet man when yeah. he's like it went wrong in java with betty but it was like a pleasant memory like he was happy mm -hmm. to recall that she was able to like make basically a four-star dinner because she was also resourcefulness and they were used to being in situations like this, despite all of their supplies being washed away. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I was happy for them to have a little bit of that, but definitely in that very next scene, you know, we're leaving the forest and Finn goes his other way to the Hunter's Wizard. And I mean, that song comes on, man, and it's just so freaking good. And I could not stop thinking about it. Um, it despite was, how sad it, it was. Is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a little bit more. I enjoyed it a lot, a lot of it more than the one or two songs we got from the first episode of yeah. with Fiona Campbell. So it's the it's just so sincere and solemn, and you know you have a man who's in a magic world with moss wizards and uh, banana guards and breakdancing derby bugs, uh, roller derby bugs, but he doesn't fit. Like he he's just a human mm -hmm. now, and the other humans that are there are, as he describes them, cool, funky future humans, which he doesn't feel like he belongs with them either. Yeah, doesn't belong with them either. But yeah. that's why I was like, man, I just it makes sense for him to go be a scientist with PB. But I don't know. That's just my kind of thought and theory behind I, all I of that. I think he too. wants to teach. Like, I think the reason he wrote that book on ancient artifacts is because his desire now seems to be more, I mean, if I'm going to just make an assumption that he wants to to teach others about the past. And maybe that's why he's doing this exhibit thing mm -hmm. because he does have a, a real desire of like, let me, you know, tell y'all about your history that y'all are ignoring or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. What it is like, and I guess that's the one thing that he is the specialist on is he is the oldest. Yeah, like yeah. he's older than Marcy technically too. So like he is the oldest creature being, sentient being in the world. So Maybe he thinks he should pass along knowledge, but you kind of see, I think he comes back. He's got the big sad montage um, from his adventure with Finn. He gets back to his home and he finally kind of gives up and you see he's got choose goose or an evil Whoa. variation of choose goose. Yeah, I knew it, um, man. I, I just freaking knew it. I, I never trusted too good to be true. Goose. 
I never trusted that son of a gun, man. I just had a sneaking s- suspicion. But I did read that it wasn't necessarily like Chuskus was always evil, right? Yeah, he I think it yeah, evil or something. could have been turned evil with something. But I think he drink something or something like that. But I was just like, man, even yeah. even when he's good, I still just didn't trust that freaking guy, man. I don't, I don't know. Anyways, I'm it's, getting yeah. distracted. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm saying is it's. It's, it's kind of like Simon. He's so scientific. And again, I think Ben Betty was so t- scientific too. I think that he's trying to figure out how to do life with that, With but this big suspicion. So the little idol he has, this kind of a spoiler is called Golb. Um, okay. And it's kind of a similar, but it's different like being glob, than right? Glob. Yeah, it's like Glob, but it's like Glob's not bad, but Golb is bad. Okay. Uh, and more powerful anyway. Yeah, but it's definitely a creepy shrine that he has it, in his house. It plays into how Betty sacrifices herself. Um, okay. That's why I think he's trying to summon, pretty much summon Golb and get Betty back from however she was lost, essentially. Um, I'm trying to do it without, like, No, that's fine. Spoilers. I, it's really fascinating, though, that his own words are what, I mean, I guess it wasn't his own words, right? It's Ice King's words. But it's what inspires him finally. You're like, it's the final show. He's like, okay, fine. I'm going to do this. I'm going to I've got to go, go in the f- closet. It's the, uh, well, yeah, the didn't know what secrets lay in the Crystal City mm-hmm. at the bottom of the lake, but she knew there was only one way to find out, mm-hmm. which, yeah, I mean, ain't that the way it is, as we know from uh, Greg from Over the Garden Wall? But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry, it's, it's fall. I'm excited. It's fall. And we're going to do a good fall episode of Any and Beyond today, too, which is yeah, on the fun. Patreon. Um, but it's, yeah, he finally, I think is maybe trying to look at it from so many logical perspectives. He's trying to figure out how like he can go about life and still be happy. And he finally is like, okay, this, I, if, if I die, if I don't come back, if I summon <laughs> a mega God demon again, that destroys the world, whatever, like, I just can't do this anymore. So that's kind of yeah. why he, um, and obviously he's trying to open this portal, which he, does in s no well he like does and doesn't at the same it's time it's not the portal he was trying to it's open not the portal I he was assume. trying to open but it's um, you know why does he have evil chuskus there in the cage in his room it should be in the closet as well or somewhere else you got this thing that's just egging you on i mean evil chuskus you know throughout this episode there's two times where he kind of like starts to egg him on a little bit or stops yeah. him or kind of messes with simon and I, he's my most punchable character, without a doubt. And I'm assuming he is probably yours as well, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would say easily. I was trying to think if there was anybody else at the bar. I don't know, man. Also, no, the new, no one is bad the, the new humans are pretty punchable as well. Pretty I don't punchable. there's something. They remind me of the who's <laughs> down in Whoville. That, okay. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with them, but I'd want to punch one. There's, I will say though, Evil Chuskus does have what I would say is the best line of the episode. I mean, of course, Evil Chuskus, or Chuskus, as we know, always has these like rhyming things where bury the past or even burn the, um, the suffering you can't unlearn, which is great. But the best line is, uh, forever, forever she will, am- oh, geez, words, forever she will languish while you wallow in anguish. And I was just like, dude, that's, that's a good line. That's a, that's a real good line. Yeah, despite and the fact he, that I just I want to punch you. I'm sorry, but <laughs> besides the fact that your eyes are rolled into the back of your head, and I want to punch you. Um, but man, okay, this is why I love doing this, like episode by episode with you now, and that we almost did two in one last time because now I've got a second, theoretically speaking, about how this ties in with Fiona and Cake, right? Oh yeah, I actually do too. Okay, good. This is, I think ours might align now because there was a few things in this episode that I called out that were similar to the episode one. And one was the statue in Ice King's living room that was like the goddess statue that he put little glasses on to make look like Betty. Was very similar to the statue in the garden park um, where Fiona was living. Uh, Fiona's only TV show that Ishigame watches Cheers and Ice King puts Cheers on and it's obviously the only TV channel slash VHS he probably has. Um, yeah. That's one thing. And then I think it's kind of because Cake jumps out the back of his brain. Um, and then there was lots of notes of like him in this episode going, I did not write Fiona and Cake. Ice King wrote Fiona and Cake. That And that's gone now. So I think that there is some instance where Fiona 
and cake are real in the different universe that is still real is pretty much simon's subconscious which we do yeah, see it's fully affected by simon yeah, yeah there is a lab there's a whole episode where they kind of go inside the crown and it's kind of like a labyrinth of stuff <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say not as well it's for you <laughs> yeah. so yeah. the fact that there is kind of like this manifestation of his yes yeah, subconscious um and then it makes sense that they'd be like oh yeah like fiona didn't know how long she had knew, known gary um that she said what did she say about 12 years oh like i've um, uh, the the statue was renovated twelve years ago, right? Renovated twelve years ago, and so I think what happened is when si when uh, Simon became Simon and Ice King like lost the ice powers, everything in Fiona and Cake's world became like the real world. Um, kind of just got like boring. No more magic. No more crazy. Yeah. No more uh, dragons and beasts and whatever. And that's why Fiona's bored with it. Because she's like, I want the world to be more magical. So like the, the world that Ice King created for Fiona was one that she enjoyed living in, but she doesn't like this new world, you know? Yeah, I, I totally, I'm with you, man. I, we were kind of thinking, of course, so he doesn't have magic, she doesn't have magic, or they don't have magic in their world. Yeah. But when Simon is thinking about going near items from his past, right, when he's doing the ritual... I think that's when Cake was being called to yeah. ice or being called to magical The little ice sources. things were happening. Like the ice was coming out of the, the fridge. Like Yeah, I think yeah. they parallel. I think whenever that was happening, they were occurring at the exact same time. Mm -hmm. And we're just kind of seeing now the timelines come together. Um, yeah, and we had some other thoughts too. And I say we, me and Allie watched this together. Um, you know, Simon's stories are connected was to Fiona's dreams, which was another thought we were having because she was dreaming that she was in the Sailor Moon costume and she was battling ice and all this, battling mm -hmm. on ice and stuff. And we were thinking it was because Simon, that was like the last things he wrote as Ice King. And that was like her stuck in a perpetual state of like, this is where she's dreaming because this is where the hero was written to be in the final chapters of his book or something. Yeah, but yeah. I don't like, know. Like she's finishing the book herself in her dreams, kind of. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Or just like forever, because she said that she keeps having this dream. So I'm guessing she like she's stuck in that adventure. Like she's never getting out of that adventure. It's not going on any further because he hasn't written any more of her book, right? And it's connected through his brain. I, I don't know. It's just some thoughts. I thought it was really fascinating. I mean, certainly... Mm -hmm she has this desire for more feel or for more and like feelings that like her life is just so mundane and it's got to be a result of, of her connection with Simon who also feels that same way. Mm -hmm. Who feels like I was going to say the whole concept of it was and, about waking up and going to work, being bored with that um, and being like, look, my work doesn't have purpose. I don't have a reason to get up in the morning. And Fiona's kind of doing that except for the fact that she's got to like make rent obviously, but. Yeah, well, life is hard, man. When you got to wake up every morning and freaking burn your pants with an iron, like, it's not easy to do that. You know how that is. You know just how many pants life. you go through to do that? I mean, gosh, Levi's, they just keep jacking up the price. And I'm like, they're every <laughs> other day. <laughs> I'm just getting so many damn Levi's. But so that was damn a... Damn Levi's. <laughs> football phones. <laughs> football phones and Levi's. The real American way. But I, I'm I glad that you that picked up beginning. on the same thing that I was like picking up on of like, okay, this is definitely, we're tying way closer connections between this new Fiona and Simon herself. And I, if I had to take a guess, the whole point of this show is going to be looking at the two of them. And again, something about seeking purpose and where, where and how you seek a driven purpose. And that Fiona is going to somehow end up with, Simon in this world and be so pumped that it's like all magical and um oh my gosh why would you ever not love being here everything's so great every there's so much to explore and adventure and that's her driving force is that she's also the adventurer Simon's going to be like no like you had it great in there and I'm just trying to get back to my old life back to my non magical yeah, normal life. life yeah and she's going to oh, look at man. him like he's insane so that's I think that's where we're setting up for for sure I think that's great. I think, yeah, they're definitely going to end up helping each other and with some shared goal, which probably will be saving Finn if I had to make an assumption with the, the kind of radiating claw marks or not really claw marks, but tree scratches that he got from falling mm -hmm. into the tree. Mm -hmm. um, oh, man, we'll see. I, I'm so curious where this is going to go. Yeah, and but then to wrap just, it. 
Oh, well, I was going to say I to wrap it all say, up. Uh, no, you say, okay, you say it first. I got to, yeah. not, not a wrap up not the wrapping podcast. It up. I'm not wrapping wrap, it up. <laughs> yeah, just the, the, the like note on what's next too. Oh, well, yeah, go ahead and say that because I'm just going to go back to the part that I loved. Oh, I was going to say, it's obviously something crazy is happening now because a new button appears on Prismo's remote. And that's yes. what I would say my tops of the episode is just the last of it. Is that we just yeah. like zoom in on the time room, hot sauce everywhere whole new button on Prismo's remote. And I think Prismo, we're going to have an episode of Prismo's that's like, holy shit, like this is, the universe is going to end. Like we've never seen Prismo's this. Prismo's going to care though? You think yeah, he's going to... Yeah, I think this new remote or the new button appearing on the remote means that whatever portal will connection... Will pique his interest. Will pique his interest and he'll be yeah. like, oh shit, like Finn, get down here, you know? Interesting, because I, you know, as we talked about in the past or when we saw Prismo at the beginning of season five... I definitely felt like he was that Tom Bombadil character that kind of felt like it, what happens in the present day or what happens to these humans or whatever doesn't really matter to me. Like it's just a part of a timeline that is so much greater than them sort of a mindset. It, right? it is. But if you also does think about Jake, if he, and then if he is the spider and the universe is his web and he's like the epicenter of it, if there's something that can destroy part of your web, all of your web, like it's enough for you to care about, you know? It is enough. It is enough for sure. Oh, man. I'm so fascinated. I, I love Prismo. I've only met him like two or three times. And so and I was I, like, oh my gosh, we I got so Prismo. lucky that we are not six episodes behind where this is. Otherwise, I'd have to be like, oh, okay, shoot. Now we've got to like <laughs> brush through the podcast to get everything. to Prismo. <laughs> we might have to do a little bit of that. Um, th- there'll probably be some episodes if like we really want to be okay. I'll be like, just go and spoil one episode from season eight. Go watch that one because it'll make everything make more sense. And I think um, most of what's going to happen is going to be its own adventure with callbacks, right? I think we're going to constantly be referring to the past or there's going to be something with Betty, of course. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, I have a feeling that this is going to be, all right, now we're going on yeah. our own direction that plays into it. Because, you know, I don't know. We'll see, man. If but everything I think that I would think people matter that. that you didn't know is just going to be Easter eggy. Like, yeah. uh, Dirt Beer Guy being the bartender is kind of like an Easter egg. Like, we have a, a whole episode about Dirt Beer Guy. Um, who used a to be whole a episode? Guy. Man, what? <laughs> There's a couple of episodes coming up where you're like, yeah, we're going to spend an entire episode on this. And it makes me go, why? Well, <laughs> okay. We, an entire episode about Root Beer Guy is, like, I'm talking 10, 10 minutes, you know? Like that, that, <laughs> okay. he, Dirt Beer Guy gets a good 10 minutes, like, but little that's an side episode. candy game. Story. Yeah. <laughs> 10 minutes is a whole episode, Ned. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. So it's going to be good. That's why, that's why you got to hang. You got to hang <laughs> in there. Okay, well, it. but I'll let you go back I, to your original point because I wanted to just mention before all of it yeah. that the tops, the best, everything we've all been waiting for is like that kind of uh, oh, we're going to give you some answers. Oh, we're going to give you more multiverse. Oh, we're going to give you more Prismo. It's like very, very exciting. Yeah, I I just really enjoyed the scene with the super fan, and it made me think. Yeah, of course he's depressed. Even from that standpoint, like that's not even what's depressing him. He's a little annoyed about everyone just being like, oh, I loved your past works. Your past works are so much better than your present works. But that, that's that got to be terrible, man. I mean, the super yeah. fan means so well, and it's just so happy to be there every day and be able to talk to like the writer of her favorite works. And he just he just can't deal yeah, with it. Well, I mean, even Dirt Beer, Dirt Beer guy is like, let me uh, give you my manuscript and and tell me what you think about it, please. Yeah, like, everybody still only knows him as the author of the Fiona and Cake novels. Yeah, he's like, oh man, it inspired me. You know, your past writings were just so incredible. You wrote it in basically what was a fugue state. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, it wasn't me. Like, I, I'm not connected to that. I mean, maybe that's, I'm thinking back to an interview with Rick Rubin that um, What's His Face did from Outcasts. Um, Andre 3000 did where like he just doesn't feel like he's like he did those things but it feels like it it wasn't him or something it's like it's he doesn't know where that inspiration came yeah. from or like how he did it he, despite the fact that he keeps doing all these collabs and he's crushing them but regardless yeah. so he's not putting out new music right so Simon's mm-hmm. putting out new music which is his books but they're not connecting in the same way that his past things did yeah it's very fascinating well, I'd say yeah well the other overarching point and what gets into my like lesson and, and deep thought stems from what you're saying is the fact that like he 
goes on that rant in the bar of like, I, I still put on my ice king clothes sometimes to try to, and it's gotta be weird. Like he's now in his, you know, most clear headspace. He's sane. He's been insane for a thousand years. And, uh, when he was sane a thousand years ago, he was still like threat of <laughs> dying from zombies and stuff like that. And that it's weird that he is kind of seeking out and, you know, uh, looking back and missing the times when he was Ice King because it was just easier. And even though he had like wizard sadness, he had wizard madness. Uh, that's what the song's all about. It's like, I'm not part of that sadness anymore. I'm not part of that badness anymore. But I, if I don't have wizard sadness, like, why am I still sad? Like, what is this mm -hmm. sadness? And like, is one better than the other? Like, was he happier as kind of a, you said, fugue state ice king? Um, yeah, and he used to dress up like that, right? Like, things just felt simpler back then. I yeah. mean, Ali compared him to a, a man at a time, a real Captain America type for a moment there where... Oh, yeah, you know, like trapped in the just, ice for 100 years or whatever. Yeah, I, you know, yeah. of course, my mind goes to uh, Austin Powers, but, the, you know, different... <laughs> generations i'm just kidding we're the same generation uh she just wasn't a bro like i was i guess but uh, oh yeah because she likes marvel and you like austin powers <laughs> I, right yeah i used to watch austin powers as a kid but i did think it was really interesting getting a little bit away from simon and going to because we have a couple more characters we need to touch on before we finish this up right we need to mm -hmm. talk a little bit more about uh our boy finn and how he seems to have a change in fate, like the way that he views fate. We've talked about this on several other episodes from the past. And it seems to me that his new philosophy is kind of Jake's philosophy from the New Frontier, right? Where mm -hmm. Jake was accepting of what was going to happen. You know, like he saw the Croat dream and that's just how things were going to end. And he was okay with that. And if that's how he was meant to go out, that's how he was meant to go out, right? But for whatever reason... Finn now, and he was, well, Finn and the New Frontier was trying to change that and ended up creating the situation that he viewed in his dream. But Finn now trusts fate and he's like, let me put these blindfolds on and it's just going to lead us like where we need to be. You mm -hmm. know, that's his, his new philosophy, it seems. And that was really cool to me to see a little yeah, bit. Of, I mean, that is, that's a, a good change, I think. Let's go back and talk like, like, and, and say, like, you know, with our, going into what the the Enchiridion was and the Enchiridion being the Stoics handbook of like, I can only control control what I can control. And then like anything I can't control, I don't let affect my feelings, affect my happiness, um, affect, you know, except for responding to outside sources that I can physically respond to. But that's why he's probably a little like, you know, I can't control what happens around me. I can just control what I do about what's around me. So that's definitely yeah. where that comes from. And I think that, that that's a definitely, like you said, a lot what Jake was saying with the new frontier of like, if this is my time, it's my time. That's okay. Like, Well, Simon's the new Finn. Simon's the one yeah. that's not trusted in fate, you know, and he's doing what he can to change it, you know. But I think in this universe, like fate is going to end where it's going to end. Like things are just going to go the way that they're going to go. Maybe except for with the exception of Prisma, but we'll see how yeah. Prisma plays into um, this, especially if he is, as you were saying, a spider on a web that he's trying to keep together. That would be a really fascinating change. Um, yeah. They, well, and like, oh, I'm trying to think. There's some of the, well, and I know, I know Finn is, is that way because of in, in distant lands, like when he ends up in the dead world, finally, he's like, I died whoopee i get to go see jake now and he's like so happy <laughs> that he's dead which is honestly, like that's like the best finn reaction ever cool well also let's talk about marceline a little bit we get to see a yeah, little we get a brief marcy pb moment yeah she's hanging out with princess bubblegum it's not to say like are they together or are they not together we don't know that but we know that they're together getting tattoos and both of them have issues with whether or not they can get a tattoo. <laughs> and both of them yeah. are pretty comedic. I think I really enjoyed the fact that her skin was healing so fast that she was just getting tattoo. Like, that's torture, dude. Tattoo yeah. after tattoo <laughs> after tattoo in the same spot. But it just keeps healing up. <laughs> she needs to get, like, a tattoo, but it needs to have, have like... Like, PB could totally invent, like, sunlight ink 
to where mm. it'd be like because she's a vampire and like it wouldn't be ink, but it'd be like burning sunlight onto your skin. Like you could, you could, it could work. Yeah, yeah, you could, you could do that. <laughs> but I but thought I, it was. I don't think she will. <laughs> the big well, and like I, it's fun to watch both of them. You know, there were so many episodes in Adventure Time where PB's like stressed out or not happy, or with the Candy Citizens, with Marceline, with Finn, and that she just seems really happy right now. They're all like laughing and giggling over this stuff, but it's a big moment, I think, for. Simon, he didn't want to call her up. Also, when he calls her up, he's got uh, Lady Island in his phone, which is an episode we have coming up later where he kind of has a crush on an island that is a lady, like a sentient island. Um, <laughs> I thought that was a funny little Easter egg callback. That is um, good. But with Marcy itself, it was kind of interesting. He doesn't want to call her, I think, because his role in Marcy's life was to protect her um, when she needed him. Yeah, and now she doesn't really need him. He calls her, and she's like having she's happier than she really has been in the last thousand years. And I don't think Simon wants to pull her. He doesn't want to mess it up. Yeah, yeah, doesn't want to mess this up. He doesn't, doesn't want to be a burden. Like yeah. I think that's the real issue. Is he just doesn't want to be a burden, which is what mm -hmm. you're saying. Yeah, and it's, it is, is a, bummer, a bummer. Yeah, and I think we get that too in real life. Like I think there's moments where you realize that your parents are human and they have issues. And sometimes your parents come to you with stuff as you get older. And it, it, it feels weird at first. It's really can be a little uncomfortable. And sometimes, unfortunately, people will get taken advantage of because of that weird dynamic. Um, but, you know, I don't, I don't know. I, I can definitely understand that. I can't understand from his point of view because I've never been there before. But I imagine one day we, we may be, you know. We may be calling out to our kids or someone that we brought up mm -hmm. and I'm sure that's going to be difficult to do. And so, and of course when he calls her and like you said, and she's having a ball that they can't stop laughing. Like mm -hmm. Princess Bubblegum is gumming up the tattoo gun, you know, and, and they just think it's the funniest thing in the world. Like the last thing you want to do is like ruin someone's good day especially if you're already pretty depressed and pretty mm -hmm. down on yourself. And so, of course, he doesn't say anything. And she's just like, oh, yeah, no, not even being able to read because he she can't tell what's happening or or see his situation. Just, yeah, let's catch up sometime. Like, we we got to do breakfast or whatever, right? Um, yeah. Oh, and she's like, yeah, we'll talk soon. <laughs> Bye. You know? Yeah, we'll, we'll chat soon. But, um, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. But I, I am glad that he tried. It was cool that he tried to reach out to her. And that was the one bit of good advice that I think Finn gave him the entire time they hung out this episode. Yeah, I think. Well, and you can see Finn has a lot more. He's not great advice. He's not great at it, but he is wiser. You can kind of tell just a little bit, you know. Just a little bit. Maybe just more mature, but. I just wish um, he would be even more mature <laughs> or, or even wiser. <laughs> I don't oh, know. Oh, man. But well, with I was your theory, he is being th wiser, right? Because your theory is that it was all a fake situation that they created with yeah. Bear. I, I think he was really trying to, like, do it the only way Finn knows how. Finn would not know how to be like, oh, yeah, like, let's go do, like, an emotional therapy session. Like, that would be Finn's best way of doing a therapy session. And he, it works for him, you know. He goes out and adventures. And I think it leads to kind of, like, my lesson um, of this episode is because a lot of it was, like, Simon is lacking purpose uh, in his life. And it's not about what he's necessarily doing, whether he's going on adventures or whether he's – what the actual adventure is. He doesn't have anybody to do the adventure with. And that's where his lack of purpose is stems from. So I was like kind of my lesson is it doesn't matter what adventuring you're doing that gives your life purpose. It's like who you're adventuring with that gives your life purpose. Um, like AKA Finn and Huntress Wizard, AKA – Marcy and Bubblegum are getting tattoos, which they neither of them can get a tattoo, but they're having a blast doing it, like just with each other. The fact that they're together, so yeah, that's why uh, maybe this Fiona into Simon's life is going to give his life new meaning, new purpose. You know, that's really interesting. I mean, I think it is uh, a good lesson. I think that makes sense for for you to take away that lesson, especially being a, a married man, right, mm -hmm. and having that perspective. Um, and I, of course, am in a very committed relationship and all that as well. Um, but I don't think that's not to say that like you can't individually 
pursue no, life by no, yourself, not, right? Like, yeah, but like again, it's it's not to say I'm saying that the uh, like you, not you only, but maybe it's easier to feel like you have per not you have purpose, but a lot of purpose can stem from yes, who you're doing. Like, I could watch TV all day with Jackie and be like, that was a great day because yeah. I spent it with her. But if I do that by myself. It's like the same yeah, exact exactly. thing, but it, I was like, that's a waste of a day, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's, I mean, yeah. that's a whole nother podcast conversation, honestly, because yeah, sure. there, there are plenty of things that I've read that, you know, lead to like, you know, life alone is a, a good life. There's ways to make that a very fulfilling life, but it can be a difficult life. Like you're saying, because mm -hmm. you don't have someone there and Simon, you have to, you have to put up way different walls, way different perspectives yeah. on expectations, staying busy. Uh, things that give you perp, like chopping firewood rather than, I don't know, uh, sitting on the couch watching, doing nothing. So, you know. Yeah, I think we're forever perpetually in some sort of a state of feeling like if one thing was different, our lives would be a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And Simon certainly feels that way. He's like, gosh, my life is so much better. Or if I could just get Betty back and we could be normal again, and, and that's things would just be, be so good. But yeah. But you can't recreate that past, man. Like things aren't going to be the same way that they used to be. And I hope Simon doesn't learn that the hard way. I hope he can have a, a very satisfying future, however it ends up for him. Yeah, we'll I think that that's going to be, I, if I had to wager a guess too, we're going to get more Betty, but we're going to see more of her. She's either going to come back or he's going to go into a different universe and go adventure with Betty in that universe. And she's not going to want to come back and, you know, just do the old school stuff they used to. And he's going to have to be like, okay, like getting Betty back wasn't the answer to being happy. So like, what is it? And he's going to have to find that for himself, you know? Yeah. Ned, I'm getting nervous as we're talking about this and kind of how expansive this could be. I'm really kind of hoping this is like a season thing and that they don't turn this into a whole nother oh, like, series. Yeah. I th I'm already picking up just vibes that we're going to be getting probably 10 to 20 episodes like tops, but like, I just don't really need a season two. I feel like once you do that, you run out of material <laughs> and you, you know, we've I, hey, about this there the was podcast. a season two. It's going to be a while before it comes out and we'll have enough time to get through at least season five before <laughs> season yeah. two of Fiona and Kate comes out. I know. I just, I just don't want the writer. I want the writers to have a purpose with where they're going. Cause it feels like a really good direction mm -hmm. they're going right now. And it feels like this could be a really, really great, spinoff show or just extension to the universe yeah that's it, i like that it's it's spinoff it's not a recreation like everything's getting re we already talked about this last week but i'm excited yeah. that it's like just adventure time season 11 kind of with yeah what's going on in the future which is which is what i was kind of expecting out of the last episode was to get more answers like that we're getting now so this kind of feels like again just like there was two episodes of Distant Lands that felt like that. That felt like they probably should have been the series finale. And now where it's like, we're just getting another great season of it. Yeah. Now, my lesson is you can't change the past. You can only work to build a better future, which mm -hmm. unfortunately is not as funny as some of my lessons usually no, are. But that's okay. I think, I think from an episode that gives you this sad of a song, you need to have a deep yeah. lesson, you know? What is your, who's your lovely? Did you tell me that? I, I think Finn's my lovely. I know that you just didn't like him from the <laughs> maybe immaturity. I just think just getting Jeremy Shada back and doing Finn's voice and it felt good. seeing him it as this big, good. buff, burly, Thor-looking character with an even more badass robot arm this time around. I, I like Finn, and I like seeing him grow up and be the same. It makes me feel better about like growing up. Like I, I, you don't have to just like be different or less whimsical than you were when you were like ten years old. You could still yeah. be mature and adventure and be your same self. I like that. That's so good. Was, right. And you said yeah, you're lovely you with Simon, me. obviously. Mine's Simon, without a doubt. Uh, but yeah, man, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. I mean, I'm I'm pumped to go through this series. I think it's going to be a really good one, and I can't wait. To, to see what happens, man. I'm just excited. Um, I, my rec this week, if we're going to do recs for these, is It Takes Two, which is a, a video game that we bought a little yeah. while back. It it's, was uh, like five I think bucks at Target. I think it's uh, free on PlayStation. Like, oh. I've got the PlayStation 
plus or PlayStation premium or whatever, where I think I can download it for free. I just don't have a second controller and I want to play it, it with Jackie. It's freaking good. Well, you have a switch, right? So just go get another. Switch I don't controller. have. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. I'd rather go get on a PlayStation. They, they all cost a lot anyway. So that's true. Well, what's so good about it is I feel like, so Allie's not much of a gamer and I used to be a pretty big gamer. So you can have someone who's pretty good at games and someone who is not, and it balances out really well. Like you don't lose or get a game over, right? Unless both of you die at the same time. So if she's failing at something constantly or, or whatever it is, or like we're fighting a boss and there's an issue with how she does something, I'm able to help or just stay alive and keep us going without it feeling like, oh my gosh, we can't make it through this freaking mm-hmm. battle, you know? So I'm not getting frustrated and she's being challenged, but not overly challenged. And I think that is a really nice mix. And we're not completely through the game by any means, but we're several hours in now. And it's been a lot of fun. It's been okay. a good game. That's, I'm glad you brought it up because it does make me want to go back and be like, maybe I will sneak over to Best Buy today and get a controller and download that and play it with uh, Jackie tonight. Um, you know, it is all about, it's like two parents that are going through a divorce. So it is all about kind of like working together yeah, like working and getting together. through yeah, I've heard it has a stuff. good meaning behind it too. Yeah. And with that, know, maybe, maybe it's a good couples therapy tool of uh, teaching you patience. Maybe so. Or just go to <laughs> maybe actual so. therapy. <laughs> or just go to actual therapy. Um, this is, well, I've got, I've got two recommendations. One is kind of just bland and basic, but I, I, I'll save my second one for next week, I think. But my rec this week, is going to be college football, man. It's back on. We are recording this the weekend of college football. So obviously it's going to be like week two or three or four by the time this gets released. But man, it's just like, guys, we live in the South. We went to UGA. Like Jackie is now into football. Like she's like, okay, only thing we have to do today is we got to watch Clemson versus Duke tonight. And I was like, that's amazing. I love the fact that you like want to watch college <laughs> football tonight. I love that. So it just, it's, it's opening up our autumn and fall season. And if you want to hear more of our deep thoughts on that, go to our Patreon. we got a whole episode where we will have it. We, at some point we will have it. It'll be on there yeah. about just getting freaking pumped up for fall. Yeah, let's just, we're releasing the Patreon September 12th. That's that's the goal. That's when it's coming out. Um, we're going to have two or three tiers. One is a $1 tier where you basically, you're supporting us and you're helping us make this happen. And, um, you know, like we could do that, do all of this without you. And, and we'll probably include those. We're going to have a newsletter. And I think uh, that tier will be a part of the newsletter. They'll be able to get that. Um, the other tiers, you got a five and a ten dollar tier, lovelies and sexy uh, followers, travelers, and it's going to be like basically with the podcast. There's going to be a Discord for those tiers. Um, there's going to be stickers for anyone that joins those tiers that are going to be of the new podcast for the Patreon, which is NEA and Beyond that Ali designed um, the logo of, and we'll release that on Instagram real soon here. And yeah, we're just, we're super pumped. And hopefully that Discord can really be a place where like, oh, we have a a watching party or something like that, right? Or like we're hanging out and people are talking about the episodes of the podcast or they're talking about what they've been watching and all that. And Mm. it's just like for travelers, for committed travelers and people that like really just enjoy the podcast, enjoy hanging out with us each week. Um, So we're really excited. I mean, you know, do the five if you want to support and the 10 is really just like, a, hey, if you want to give more, you can, but don't feel obligated to. There's no like yeah, if you, extra benefit. If you donate to doing $10, that. we'll fly you down to Nashville. No. And, uh, <laughs> no. Come no, record no. live with us. All on Ned's dime. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's, yeah, it's just like uh, if you want to give more for whatever reason, you know, we're happy <laughs> to accept that. Oh, yeah. Uh, Guys, we're, we're, we're not even trying to make money on this. We're trying to, no. to pay our sound engineer. That's what yeah, we're working on doing. break even. <laughs> yeah, DJ Cowboy Hat's got to eat, guys. He does. He's got to eat. Let the big dog eat, as they say at UGA, uh, to go with Ned's football thing. But yeah, sports. Uh, check us out on Instagram at Neverending Adventure Podcast. TikTok at Neverending Adventure Cast. Twitter at NEA underscore podcast. Email us your thoughts, your opinions. We'll, we'll do a traveler's log soon. Uh, I just knew this episode was going to be a yeah, lot to talk about. It's going to be a lot. These these episodes are just going to be differently structured. Uh, yeah. Don't have the exact same expectation uh, for what our you know normal programming is. But yeah, 
But uh, yeah, you can email us at uh, nea.travelerslog at gmail.com. Um, find us on YouTube, all the things. Give us a review. We really appreciate it. That's a great way that you can help us. And gosh dang it, party forever. I love you guys. Thank you.